The Prep Alliance Football Review with Coach Caleb Ross. Brought to you by Gibson's Tire Pros. Dreyer Physical Therapy. Your hometown Allstate agent, Lynn Norris. CBE. And Showtime Graphics. Welcome in, Line Nation, to week five of the Prattville Lions Football Review. I'm Will Barrett, joined as always by our head coach, Caleb Ross. And uh, Coach Ross, last Friday at Hohenberg Stadium against Potomka, we got him. Yeah, I was very proud, man. This was a big win for uh, a big win for our community, big win for the, this, the, the pride of who we are, the pride of Prattville, all that good stuff, man. It was. Uh, you know, you didn't beat them. I know since 2013, I guess it's a little bit, uh, I guess, odd stat because we've only played them since 2000, I guess, 15 or 16. But mm-hmm. still, the way Wetumpka has beaten us and beaten Prattville, I mean, it's really been uh, – that one game was really close. They've really kind of run away with it the last couple of years. So, for us to get some pride back, and me to me, at their place and the way we did it, man, we just dominated them up front on both sides of the football it was a tight game at half, but I think if we don't turn the ball over, I think we may be seven to ten points better at halftime. Mm-hmm. And to come out in the second half and and really, man, just impose our will running the football on them was something I was very proud to see. And really all night, just the physicality our defense played and really just set the tone and set the message of that, uh, you know, hey, at least this year, man, this is going to be a this is going to be a win for Prattle. I know Wetumpka is a 6A school, but they're a power 6A school. And when you get up in the, the upper echelon of 6A, there's not a whole lot of difference between 6A and 7A at that point. Wetumpka has been in a, a dynamic offensive team for a number of years, and this year had been no exception. If you had told me coming into the game and told everybody, hey, Prattle's going to hold Wetumpka to one offensive score, nobody would have believed that. I don't know if I would have believed it. I'm just being honest. If I'm being real candid as the head coach, I really thought that we had the better team, and I thought we would win the football game. But – I did not see that coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, we just really played with a, an edge. And you're right, we're talking about it's a 6A program, but they have really been one of the elite 6A programs, uh, uh, not only just the area, but the state. And and they've had some really special athletes over their last couple of years that are better than, man, I guess probably three-fourths of the 7A teams you're going to face. So, man, it's it's they've been, a, they've been a powerhouse here lately and really kind of been the dominant team in this in central part of Alabama. And I think, man, we really made a statement. And we're not there yet, and I'm not by far saying we're some dominant team. But I think we definitely made a statement that, hey, you know, man, we sent a message, hopefully, that Wetumpka and some of the other teams that, hey, we're, we're coming. We're on our way. And I was really proud. You're right. We held a, a Wetumpka to one offensive touchdown, 213 yards total offense. Yeah. And probably 35 of those were on the last play before the half. Right. When he ran a long run, uh, when really in a very soft prevent defense. So. Unbelievable job by our defense. Unbelievable job by Coach Shook, our defense staff. They had a, get, a great game plan. We were dialed into what they wanted to do, who they were going to be. Uh, man, and really just I'm trying, early on just set the stage of the physicality part of the football game. We were going to make our presence known, and, uh, and we did. Talk about sending messages, Coach. You sent a message to your team as well on two separate occasions in that game. Critical fourth and medium plays. One in the, at, the, at the end of the first half that really turned the game around for us. I think um, a fourth and six and a fourth and five and put us in great position to, to take advantage of the game. What, what, what brought that on? What keyed that? And, and talk about how important that was to this team. Well, we're kind of in that. We're really in the – we're right on the edge of where I thought Elliott's leg was. I mean, he's got a good leg. Um, he's only going to get better. Kid's just a sophomore. And, um, and he hit two 36-yarders against Phoenix City. And the kick that was going to be right at 37, 38 yards. Which he, and it was in the middle, so it, he was very capable of making that. But I thought if it's 13 to seven at that point, if, if we kick a field goal and make it, it's 13 to 10. I don't know if that really switches momentum. Uh, I just felt like the best move for us at that point was go for it. Uh, I thought we had a really good play. Uh, it's a play we run the buck sweep a lot. It's a play kind of a special play we run off of it. Uh, we show that same action and it's more like a tight end delay. Uh, you know, some kind of a semi play action type stuff. And uh, they actually had covered it pretty well, which made a good throw, good catch. but. Uh, so it was one of those situations I thought, what man, for us right here, we're kind of 50-50 on this field goal. And I don't know if right now three points helps us get the momentum back. And I know kicking to them, we had to kick to them to start mm-hmm. the second half. I wanted to swing the momentum back. So we made the decision to go for it. And uh, really the same thing. We're kind of in the same situation on the other one. I think we might have been maybe on the 23. So you're looking probably about a 38, 39-yard field goal, which that is right at his limit, in my opinion, of what he can do. 
Um, but in that situation, I felt like, man, if we could score, and I think we ended up getting the first uh, kick and a field goal on that drive anyway, uh, either way. But I felt like, man, if we can go punch this thing in and go up 28 to 13, you know, man, the game, we could almost you know, seal the game. But uh, we converted, uh, ended up having to uh, settle for a field goal, I think, on that drive and make it a two score game. But very proud, man. Our kids made plays right there. I mean, what a, uh, you're right, the one right for half. I mean, it just, we really didn't second guess it. I remember asking Matt, our offense coordinator, said, uh, what play you like? And uh, he said, I'm thinking about T Pop. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, I like it. Let's go with it. And so we never even second guessed it. We even, that was what we were going to run the first time. They called timeout, and we adjusted one little minor adjustment on what we were going to tag on the back side of that just to get the free safety away from the play. Um, and Taylor made a great catch. Made a great throw by Kyle, great catch, and got it down to about the two or three. And punching that ball in right there, I think really, because uh, we were kind of reeling a little bit on offense, not playing our best half. Defense is playing outstanding. We had two critical turnovers. We needed that shot in the arm, and I think mm-hmm. that's why we did it. You mentioned reeling in the first half from there, from there, just overall team speed. It's like having a hard time uh, matching that or, or getting the right getting the right sets. You go up seven zip out of the gate. They answer with thirteen straight and go take a thirteen seven lead. We go up one fourteen thirteen just before half, and in the second half we shut them out seventeen to nothing. What kind of halftime adjustments did, were, were made? Or what, did you, what was the message of the team that got them to come out and change that whole game in the second half? Well, defensively, we didn't. We was like, hey, do what you're doing. Because we'd played really good defensive football. We thought, like, we gave them a – obviously, we gave them a gift on the, on the fumble and right. the scoop and score. And I think the other one was a turnover. So we gave them a short field or just the way the, the game set up of us being pinned back, gave them a short field. If you look at it offensively, for us, man, it was really two things. Penalties killed us in the first half. We yeah. had three holding calls that put us behind the chains. And, man, you don't recover from that. It's really hard to do. And, uh, man, just we did some and, – and to be fair, with Tumka, it's almost like their game plan was going in. They were not going to let us throw it past them. Man, they were playing too deep. They'd been mainly a one-high football team to really go stop the run most of the year. They went in. They weren't going to let us throw it over their head. And we still got behind them, you know, there in the third quarter with Kendrick. So – they're playing too deep. They were basically inviting us to run. Right. And, uh, and so we finally said at halftime, hey, they're going to play 13, 14 yards off of their safeties. Let's run the football and let's keep running. And they, they never adjusted. Uh, we, we really kind of imposed our will and it got to the point where why, why throw the football when we can hand it off and grind out the clock and win this game and, and make them like it. So that was kind of the um, – that was really the game plan. We go in at halftime. We have a series of things that we do, uh, we look at. All right, what are they giving us? How and it's a, it's a process now. We're not just you know drawing in the dirt. Um, but all right, what plays do we like? So me and Matt, we sit down and hey, we like this run. We like this throw. But and we watch the we watch the iPad film from the first half and we see their alignment. Say hey, yeah, hey, let's run this right here. Let's get in this formation right here. So and hey, and we kind of get it, it gets simplified more at halftime because hey, these are the things that are going to help us win. Let's run these plays. And man, Matt and our offensive staff, man, they do a great job too. Man, he had a, you know, great adjustments. We come out. And um, we thought, man, let's run the football and win this football game. And, and like I said, we had Keandre Powell, who was, man, what a, what a phenomenal night. And I know yeah. we'll talk about him. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was really kind of it. So. 31-13 was your final score. Prattville kneels at the goal line as time expires. Could have been more. But the class of uh, this coaching staff and this team kept it at 31-13. Let's check out those first half and second half highlights right now. Hold is down, kick is up, and it's blocked. The kick is blocked. The kick is blocked, and it is recovered by Prattville at the 38-yard line. He is going to keep this one up the middle. Fumble. loses the football. Ball on the ground. Looks like Mason Taylor may have it. Eight to give this to Powell. Powell up the middle. Powell across the five. Powell in the end zone. Touchdown, Prattville. Out 26 to play in the second quarter. And set back to passes. Kramer throws it across the middle. Thompson has it. Thompson completed the 50-yard line. Thompson in the flat. Thompson 40. Thompson 30. Pushed out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Taylor Thompson from the shotgun. Powell to his left. High snap. Play action pass across the middle. It's complete to Thompson at the five-yard line. Thompson first and goal at the four-yard line. Play. Powell gets the carry. And Powell powers his way. Touchdown. Into the end zone. What a touchdown. 
going to give it off to Thomas, and he's wow. hit by Dominic James behind the line. And Dominic James at the top of the 48. Kramer pulls down a high snap, looks down the field, wants to pass, got time, throwing it deep. He's got a man down there. It looks like it's Bates, and he's got it in he's the end zone. It. He's got it. Touchdown, Prattville. Also in the shotgun. Pump fakes, now throws it deep. He's got a man down there. One-on-one -on -one coverage. And is this intercepted? It is intercepted. It's an inside pitch to Bates. Bates has got his blockers following Powell inside the 10. Bates cuts it in, cuts it outside to the six-yard line. First and goal, Prattville. Chip shot for him. Kramer puts it down. Duke kicks it up. And it is right down Broadway. Balls rolls to the right side, looking to throw. Throws it out into the flats. And it is intercepted. <laughs> intercepted by A.J. Carey at the 20-yard line. Brings it out to the 25. Give to Powell up the middle, puts his head down, and he's going to go into the end zone. Keandre Powell, touchdown once again, and the Lions' lead is extended. <laughs> and here is Rawls trying to make something out of nothing. No, Rawls loses 17. on the ground. 17, ball on the ground, and the Lions recover it. You know, we, we talked about it on the way over here, the offensive line and the defensive line. That was going to be the difference in the ball game, and indeed it was. And there are some happy, happy lines down here on the sideline. For the first time since the year 2013, the Lions enter Hohenberg Stadium and come away with a big win over Cross County rival, the Wetumpka Indians, 31-13. With over 35 years of automotive experience, Gibson's Tire Pros has the answers. Mo thinks we're having trouble with the curb. How should we fix that? Me and Mo are into the same girl. Who do you think she should pick? Do you guys think Mo's nose is too big? Of all these questions, I feel like we should have been life coaches. Nah, let's just stick to tires and automotive. Yeah. Gibson Tire Pros, we advise you decide. In our profession, we see a lot of remarkable recoveries. One thing that each success story has in common is the courage needed to take that first step. At Dreyer Physical Therapy Institute, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to get the expert opinion you need, so we've made that first step free. Sign up for a complimentary screen at any Dreyer location today, and we'll assess your condition and recommend the best next steps to get you back on the road to recovery. Call or click today to schedule your complimentary screen. DreyerPT.com slash screen. I'm a teenage girl. My BFF Becky texts and says she's kissed Johnny. Well, that's a problem because I like Johnny. Now, I'm emotionally compromised and whoopsies. I'm all OMG. Becky's not even hot. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? Welcome back to the Prep Alliance Football Review. Will Baird alongside head coach Caleb Ross looking back at last week's 31-13 victory over Wetumpka. And now, coach, it's time for... Everybody's favorite section. It's time to go inside the Lions cage, and this week we're going in with number seventeen, AJ Gary. Yeah, man, he's a phenomenal kid. He's a smart kid, and I know we were talking a little bit while ago, but he's a kid too that um, football-wise he needs a challenge, and when mm -hmm. he's challenged, man, he's really good. Um, he's become one of my favorite kids. I really like him. He plays the game with an edge on Friday night, and he's a smart kid. He's got a really good personality. So, like, so I'm always excited when I guess people can see the personality of our kids. Absolutely. Let's check out that personality right now. Inside the Lions cage right now with AJ Gary. Throws it out into the flats and it is intercepted. Intercepted by AJ Gary at the 20 yard line. Andre Gary, 
cornerback class of 2020. Chick-fil-A. It too. Two. <laughs> um, I don't think it'd be any. You listen to all good music. Too. Playlist is totally legit. Mm-hmm. I don't listen to Taylor Swift. Disney songs. Descendants too. There you right, go. Going down. <laughs> Got it. Got him. <laughs> um, Thor. I forgot his name. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thor. Mm -hmm. Big. Chip lace sandwich. Woo. So good. Mr. Peterson, because he keeps it straightforward with you and he teach you everything you know. Yeah, young boy, self control. Jalen Ramsey. I said a Popeye chicken, because it's popping. I said a salad. I said healthy foods. Our cardinal. It's car the cardinal tops or the cardinal pants? The cardinal pants. At any point, would you like to see cardinal cardinal? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that. The first. First of December? Mm-hmm. And some folks put them up right after Halloween. Ooh, that's too early. Way too early. Be yourself. Don't follow. As a leader. Who ran for pride, bro? Who ran for pride, bro? Someone in the stands yelling, who ran for pride, bro? One, two, three, four. Tell me who you yelling for. Prop boy, that's who. Woo! With over 35 years of automotive experience, Gibson's Tire Pros has the answers. Mo thinks we're having trouble with the curb. How should we fix that? Me and Mo are into the same girl. Who do you think she should pick? Do you guys think Mo's nose is too big? Of all these questions, I feel like we should have been life coaches. Nah, let's just stick to tires and automotive. Yeah. Gibson Tire Pros, we advise you decide. In our profession, we see a lot of remarkable recoveries. One thing that each success story has in common is the courage needed to take that first step. At Dreyer Physical Therapy Institute, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to get the expert opinion you need, so we've made that first step free. Sign up for a complimentary screen at any Dreyer location today, and we'll assess your condition and recommend the best next steps to get you back on the road to recovery. Call or click today to schedule your complimentary screen. DreyerPT.com slash screen. I'm a teenage girl. My BFF Becky texts and says she's kissed Johnny. Well, that's a problem because I like Johnny. Now, I'm emotionally compromised and whoopsies. I'm all OMG. Becky's not even hot. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? Welcome back to our final segment here on the Private Lions Football Review. Will Baird along with head coach Caleb Ross looking back at last week's victory over Wetumpka. Coach, there was a lot of people 
that I know you could um, that you could just harp on about the the way they played and the way they executed. And I think for for all intents and purposes, we need to start in the offensive backfield with Keandre Powell of all yeah, people. Yeah, that's it. Now, he's a kid that you know played running back for us last year. He's a di- I've said all along he may be probably our best football player on the team. He could play so many positions. And just because out of need, we played him at linebacker uh, this year. He's a really good linebacker. He's fast. He's instinctive and, and, and can tackle well. So we really need him over there. He's played some spot play at running back uh, because he's a talented running back. Uh, and then we had a, you know, Tiger goes down with an injury, and hopefully we get him back this week. Uh, we're going to wait and see. It's kind of a week-to-week evaluation, but mm-hmm. we knew he wasn't going to play last Friday. And so, and Keandre was already getting some reps at running back, and we was going to increase that already a little bit more. But when that happened, I said, hey, man, i, I got to have you. So, uh, and unfor- you know, and our other backs, you know, unfortunately, Jaden Kidd's been, been solid, but, man, he, you know, he, he fumbled Friday night. And, and I'll be honest, I mean, I hate it because I love the kid, and, and, and we're going to need him. He's going to come back. He'll be yeah. fine. But uh, we just felt like Keandre was, had the hot hand. And what we knew, and he, man, he did. Uh, you know, I think Keandre's got to get himself back in running back shape a little bit. I think late in that game, he's so like, there's a lot of carries. I said, yeah, but if anybody can do it, he can. And he did, man. I think he had 137 yards on 23 carries. What a great night. And I was proud to see James Myers as a kid. We brought in there, Absolutely. had four or five carries, and runs the ball hard. Uh, man, so those – the, the the cover's not bare, and uh, we'll get Taggart back soon enough. If not this week, we'll get him back really soon. So, a uh, really good situation at running back. Really proud of what Keandre Powell did. Uh, and, you know, I, I thought I thought Kyle probably didn't have his best game, but he made some huge plays. Uh, man, the throw to Kendrick there in the third quarter on the post route, uh, on the double post route, was, was awesome. Uh, he made some key third down conversions uh, there in the, like I said, the throw to Taylor right there for halftime and the – uh, great read on the – we were on a little mesh play where we swing our back on the other fourth down, and uh, the back's open. He checked it down, slid it out there, and got a first. And probably the play – maybe the play of the game is he, he throws the pick. No doubt. And he runs it down, man. Just Converted Kyle, deep safety. He, absolutely, <laughs> man. And I think the guy that the guy thought he was going to cruise in the yeah. end zone and realized, oh, no, here's the quarterback, makes a huge play, and uh, we're going to block the kick. So, I mean, just a, I, I thought he, he didn't have great stats and wasn't his best night, but he did some intangible, some little things to really help us win. Um, you know, man, our receivers, Taylor Thompson had a still just steady, man. He, and he's, gonna, he's had great nights. He's going to have four, five, six catches. He made some tough catches the other night. Um, he had a good night. Kendrick made the huge play. Bates, we used him more as a runner the other night just because we thought we could get his speed on the perimeter, had a good night. Uh, probably um, – and the group I continue to be the most proud of is our O-line, though. They really took over that game in the second yep. half. Uh, probably not our best night O-line-wise, but we played with an edge. Had a total of 23 knockdown blocks, and this is just the coach speaking to us. That's just, we play with the right type of mentality. You've got to play, I mean, you got to play physical, and you got to play with an edge up front. Our guys did that. So, man, really good night offensively as um, far as that goes. Not our best night stat-wise, but talking about doing the things needed to win the game. Yeah. So. Yeah, and um, I, and I know from uh, I know we'll moving over to the defense. Probably just the man the best night I've seen in a long time defensively. And there's a lot of guys that stood out. Uh, Ian Jackson had 11 or 12 tackles Friday night. Mason Taylor continues to be dominating. Our, uh, D-line played man, they just took over the game. Sure did. Uh, Dominique James, I'll give him. You know, sometimes we were leery about giving sophomores too much uh, recognition. You know, to them old enough, mature enough to handle it. But he had a phenomenal night. He's really starting to grow up, starting to get it. Uh, and Deshaun Daniels, man, I just that kid plays with an edge. He's man. an emotional he, leader. He is, man. And he's physical. I mean, he is a I man. He he's going to play with, and he brings his he brings he brings it every Friday night. And the game, Andre Gary, <laughs> two picks, two yep. block kicks, and he has a game. He has a touchdown saving tackle on a kickoff uh, mm-hmm. where we had him bottled up. The yeah. guy pops out. Uh, Colin Rogers at least makes him slow down a little bit, and Andre Gary's hustling, he makes a the tackle there. So. I could go on, man. You can mention all of them, but really, really great night. Um, and like I said, another good night for special teams. Colin Rogers hits four out of six in the end zone. Uh, Elliot Duke, that's a, that's a hard, that's a harder kick than people think. That's a tough angle, mm-hmm. left hash, and uh, he knocks it through. So, uh, and I, I tell you this, really proud of Riley Fairhurst. Had three punts, and I think we averaged about 37, 38 yards a punt. He had a good night, man. I just he's really put work in. That kid works hard, and uh, man, he I'm glad to see he had a good night. So, man, it just all around, good night for the private lines. It was a great night for the private lines, and, a, and, a, and a, a win we really needed not just for the psyche, but for this community, like you said, to get that buzz back about Prattville football, and, and really starting to see that come around. 
But I know as as fun and as important as this win was, you as a coaching staff and even the team, you said before, once the clock struck midnight, we turned the page and it's Lee week. That's right, man. And our kids, I tell you, they, they get it. Uh, they're excited. They're really excited. They're excited for the win. But, man, our kids, you could always see the – the switch happening after the game Friday and even Saturday morning, we bring our, our starters and two deep up here for like a recovery stretch type lift type deal. And man, there wasn't much talk about the night before. It was all talk about Lee. So uh, they know they got a big challenge. Lee's got a really good football team, man. They're undefeated for a reason. Um, they do such an outstanding job. Man, it's got a ton of respect for what they do. They they play within themselves. They got really good scheme. Uh, they don't. Uh, they're not overcomplicated. Now, they do really good stuff, and they got answers for about everything that you're going to do. Uh, they've got a, and they do some clever stuff. But um, man, they they let their kids play, and it's smart. They're well coached. They're real good technique. Uh, it should be a really good 7A Region Two football game. I mean, it's this what you get in our region, man. Every week's a challenge, and um, you know I'm sure some maybe I think the fans all want good games. Sometimes coaches you. We all would love to have that game where, hey, man, we should you know, we get to play a lot of guys. You don't get that in this region. Right. You just no, you don't, don't get that, man. Every Friday nah. night, it's uh, you know, you're gonna be another four quarter game. But deep down, that's what we really want. I know that's what the kids want. So uh, it should be a should be a packed house. We ain't played at home, and man, it seems like forever. Uh, you know, I didn't remember making, didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal going into the season. Here we are, four weeks and not played at home. I'm ready to get back home. I'm ready not Absolutely. have to go travel down the road. I'm ready to go only 10 minutes to our home stadium. So uh, should be a lot of people out. It's a big game. Absolutely. You said the key word there, Coach. It's a home game. We ain't had a home game in four weeks. And I know these kids are chomping at the bit to get back in the jungle. And uh, what a what a way to, to kick off this homestand than with a win Friday night against these lead generals. There is. I tell you, it's homecoming. And not that you won't leave for homecoming, but your options are limited when you play four home <laughs> games right. on the back half either – it's either Lee or Auburn, or and nobody really wants to have homecoming in November. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we're at. We have homecoming this week, uh, and we and that's the thing too that we've really got to manage with our kids is managing distractions. Right. Uh, we got a homecoming parade that we're going to be involved in. We should be involved in. It's our it's it's probably homecoming. It's great for our community, great for our city. Uh, I know we're taking a group of kids down to one of the elementary schools this week because it's to celebrate homecoming festivities. Mm-hmm. Uh, Got a lot of things going on. So that's going to be a really big challenge is can you handle some of the hype? And our kids have done a pretty good job of that this year. Can you manage the week of eliminating distractions? I think that's what we're all trying to do. How do you keep teenagers focused? you got to eliminate the distractions. So that's going to be a big challenge for us this week. we got a group that can do it, though. This group's a little bit different, man. They, they dial in. I've been just unbelievably impressed with them. They really dial in as good as any group I've ever coached or been a part of. What's going to be necessary to dial in as we approach this game Friday. Lee coming to Stanley Jensen to take on the private lines in a Region 2, um, what's going to be a, just an absolute slugfest. But, um, both teams coming in with lots at stake. Lee undefeated, Prattville only one loss. It's going to be a great night for high school football. We hope you'll be there in the jungle Friday night. Kickoffs at 7 o'clock. We're going live on the air at uh, 6, 15, uh, 6 o'clock on Prattville Live and on Dixie Country 100.1 FM. Hope to see you out there. If you can't make it, tune in to tune in and listen on the internet or on the radio. Either way you get it, it's all kind of ways to get your private lines. That's going to do a, for our time here with the Private Lines of our View Week 5. Wetumpka takes an L, courtesy of our lines 31-13. to 13. And for Coach Ross, I'm Will Barrett saying good night, God bless, and go Lions. The Private Lines Football Review with Coach Caleb Ross. Brought to you by Gibson's Tire Pros. Dreyer Physical Therapy. Your hometown Allstate agent, Lynn Norris. CBE. And Showtime Graphics.